Let's go through a quick exercise to understand the problems with inheritance and why you should stop using it. So imagine we're creating a small job system for an RPG video game and we just finished our very first class which represents a warrior. And this class has just a few methods that represent the different actions that the job can perform. So in this case our warrior can go ahead and walk, he can also attack and he also has this special ability called Fast Blade, which is just more, a more powerful way of attacking. Right? As you can see, to keep things simple, we also are doing, the only thing we're doing is just presenting just a, a line, right? printing a line on console that says stuff like walking so many steps. Right? And the actual number of steps is a simple calculation with the random class that we have over here. And in this case, it's going to go from 1 to 10. And then same idea with the attack, so attacking for so many hit points. Right? And same thing with Fast Blade. So very simple class. And I have also prepared a little uh, driver uh, program here in program CS, since this is a console application. And as you can see, here we can see how this is class is actually can actually be used. So for instance, we are declaring here a uh, Gimli, which is a warrior. And then we're saying, okay, so uh, Gimli joins the battle, and then he's going to go ahead and walk, attack, and use fast blade. So if I open my terminal here, open terminal, I'm going to just do .NET run. And let's see what comes out. Uh, you can see, okay, so Jim Lee joins the battle, walking nine steps, attacking for 32 hit points, and then using fast blade for 119 hit points. All right, so that is working great. Uh, but of course, now comes the time to implement our second job, right? Uh, so, and this job is going to be a, an archer, right? So the typical archer job. So let me just close the terminal here and let's see how can we go ahead and implement that other job. So I'm going to close program also here and I'm just going to go into my jobs folder. I'm going to create a brand new class that I'm going to call archer, of course. And then let me fix this a little bit so that it looks better and let me remove on the side of users. So this class Archer, the thing about Archer is that uh, it has similar behaviors, right? So Archers can also walk and attack. So what I'm going to do is just bring in a little bit of code from my previous class Warrior, right? So I'm going to bring in that code over here, okay? So uh, yeah, so can walk and can attack, but it has a different kind of uh, special ability that we are calling it, uh, let's say, Rapid Fire. Right, so I'm going to scroll down a bit more here. So this is going to be public void rapid fire. All right. So here we're going to say console right line. Okay, so this is going to be using rapid fire for. So let's do some random thing here. So random.next. So let's say this is going to go uh, from 80 to. 150 hit points, All right? Uh, hit, hit points, All right? So now we have the rapid fire ability for Archer, right? And he also has, uh, of course, the walk and attack abilities. So now it's time to also, let, let's go ahead and try out this other class in Perhaps CS. So here we are. So we'll have to create our new Archer. So let's name this guy Legolas, All right? It's a new Archer. Right, and then let me just copy this line down here. So Legolas joins the battle, right? And just like Gimli, so Legolas uh, can walk, and Legolas will go ahead and attack. And Legolas this time is going to go ahead and use rapid fire, right? And so now we have the two jobs over there. So let's let's run this. Let's see what we get. So run it. Okay, so as you can see, we now have Gimli uh, joining the battle and doing his, his actions. And now we also have Legolas with his new action uh, right there. All right, so this is working good. Uh, but of course, as, as you have probably noticed, uh, we have some code duplication over here, right? So we should not have attack and walk implemented both in Archer and in Warrior, right? So that's code duplication and that's a big no-no, right? So we don't want to be duplicating code. So what would you do in this case? So the typical thing that uh, tip, the people will do in this case is, of course, start diving into inheritance. And so in that case, so what people will do is, in this case, let's say we're going to create a brand new class. Let's call it uh, a job because these are, are jobs. And in this job class, and let me fix this a little bit so it reads better. Okay, so in this job class, what we're going to do is just put the common behaviors, right? So we know that uh, both of these uh, classes are using this random variable. So let's bring it in into our job class. Okay, and both of them are uh, doing both walk and attack. So I'm going to bring those two methods over here. Okay, and then now that we have this concentrated into the, in this base job class, 
I'm going to put it on the right. Uh, we can go into Warrior and say, okay, so Warrior inherits from job, right? And then we're going to say, okay, so no more walking, no more attacking for Warrior. And same idea, Archer is going to go ahead and inherit from, from job. And then no more walking and no more attacking for Archer, like that. And just like that, we have reused some code, right? So that's the, the idea behind all of these inheritance. And so if we go back into program CS, we should see that things should compile and keep working. So let me just run this again in my console. Let's verify that things are working properly. Yeah, so it keeps working. It's the same thing as before. But now, of course, Warrior and uh, Archer are much smaller classes because they're reusing the code that's now in job. And so, so far things are looking good. And since like this, this system of inheriting things for different jobs seems to be working just fine uh, until uh, comes the requirement to implement a brand new job that turns to be that's just a little bit different, right? So this one is going to be a, what we know as a white mage, right? So this is a typical healer class in, the, in an RPG. So let's go ahead and create, create our, our healer. This is going to be named, let's call it yeah, white mage. Right, so this is our white mage, and then uh, let me go ahead and fix things once again, just like that. And uh, the main ability of our white mage is that he can cure, right? So the white mage can cure. So what I'm going to do first is just grab my uh, random, right, into the white mage. And then, like I said, we need to implement a brand new ability, which is cure. So let's go ahead and implement public void cure, because white mages uh, will cure uh, his allies. And so console, right line. And so this is going to be using cure for, and so we'll have to figure out some other random, random that next. And then let's say this goes from one to just 50, right? And these are not going to be hit points. These are magic points, right? Magic points or MP as we know in these RPG games. All right, so that's great. So we have the new ability, uh, but uh, you know what? Uh, what mages are also uh, uh, just similar to warriors and, and archers in the sense that they should be, a, they should have the ability to walk, right? So we know that both of them have the ability to walk. And so, okay, so then I'll go ahead and uh, just inherit from job, right? So why not? So with that, our white mage has the ability to walk, but there's kind of a problem with this uh, because, uh, now, the white mage also has the ability to attack, right? Uh, which is, it doesn't quite fit the role of a, of a white mage. It's like, why would a white mage uh, have the ability to attack? And so, because of that, you can, you can think, okay, so what, what can we do about this? Well, uh, well, maybe I cannot inherit from, from job, and I'll have to just go ahead and re-implement uh, the walk method down into my white mage right here, right? So now white mage can cure and walk, but now we are duplicating code, right? So now we have the code duplication here in two places, really bad. And so what I see most people do in this case is just give up in the sense that, okay, I'm not going to duplicate code. I rather just inherit from job and whatever. I mean, what harm can it take uh, to inherit an ability that uh, cannot be used, right? And so the thing is, so now we can go into program CS, right? So program CS over here, let's go ahead and implement our, uh, our or use our brand new white mage. So let's scroll down a little bit and we are going to declare uh, our white mage is going to be Gandalf, of course, uh, is a new white mage. And then let me just bring in this console right there. Uh, Gandalf joins the battle, right? And so, of course, Gandalf can walk and then Gandalf uh, can cure. Uh, but interestingly, Gandalf can also attack, right? Uh, but this, this does not make sense right why would a white mage attack that just makes no sense uh so there we have a problem here right so because now we have a class that has because we wanted to inherit one of the behaviors walk it ended up also inheriting uh the other behavior attack right so that's a bit of a problem uh, but not only that you know what there's even another job that we have to implement and this is even more interesting so let's go ahead and implement this brand new job that we are calling the the paladin Right, so the Paladin is a very interesting job 
And let me clean this up once again. Uh, it's a very inter interesting job because this is a job that can act as both, uh, it has abilities both as a warrior and as, as a white mage, right? So let me just grab very quickly my random, my random into Paladin over here. And then this guy is going to have two abilities. The first ability is going to be uh, the fast blade ability. Remember that we had a fast blade ability from Warrior, so we need to have that fast blade ability in our Paladin over here, right? And we also need to have the cure ability from the White Mage, right? So we need to grab this cure ability over here uh, for our Paladin. And of course, the Paladin should also have the normal abilities of any other job, so we want to inherit from job. So now the Paladin can go ahead and uh, if go back into job. Uh, the, the Paladin can walk, can attack, and then can do fast blade and can cure. But uh, now we have even more code duplication, right? So unfortunately, the fast blade ability is locked into the warrior job, right? And then the cure ability is locked into the white mage job. And the other abilities, right, are locked into the inherited uh, class, walk and attack, right? And so, and I'm just going to put it here. This is code duplication, right? So code duplication there, code duplication there, right? And uh, this is just not looking good, right? So we are locked in this situation where we're just inheriting things that we don't need. There are other things that we need that we cannot have. And so we are duplicating code. So this is this is just really bad. And so this is really the problem with inheritance. And this is where, where I, what I have seen in many things where I have worked. Uh, people just keep falling on, into this over and over again, right? And there's no reason for that. There's a much better way to do this. And it is by using this thing called composition, right? Composition. So what does that mean? Right. So instead of doing this thing here, we're going to switch into a different way of uh, introducing all of these behaviors. And in fact, we're going to be creating a brand new folder here that we're going to be calling behaviors, right? And what we're going to do is just take each of these behaviors. And let me go back into a uh, job first. And we're going to be taking each of these behaviors and just create a class for each of them so that later on we can compose uh, those behaviors into the classes that actually need them. Right. So and let's start with uh, the behaviors of the of the job, uh, the base job class here. Right. So let's grab in and let me grab these two, these few lines here into our uh, brand new. Let's call this one. Uh, since this is going to be for walking, so let's call it walk. So this is going to be the walker behavior. And let me clean this up like that. And the walker will have, of course, the ability to walk. Right. So that's the only thing that that walker knows how to do to walk. Right. So now we have that, that behavior over there. And then the other one is going to be for the attack. So let's create a brand new class here. It's going to be attacker, right? And let's clean up this once again. And so what we want to do is just bring in uh, both the, the random over here, bring the random, and then we will bring the attack method over there. All right, right there. So. Now we have two behaviors that we can introduce into any of the classes that actually need them, right? And so our first candidate for this is going to be the, the warrior. Now the warrior also has one more ability, uh, which is fast blade, right? We should do something about that. And so for that, let's go ahead and create, and let me just copy all of this, copy this. Let's create brand new behavior here that's going to be named um, swordsmanship or just a sword. Right, and so fixing this once again, and so okay, let me just paste what I just copied. And in this swordsman's behavior, we have encapsulated now the the one fast blade uh, method that we had before, right? So now we have these three behaviors that we can now use anywhere with, that we wanted uh, in in our inner jobs. So now if we go back into warrior, we can make uh, a few changes, right? So to start with, warrior is no longer going to inherit from job not going to be needed. And then instead of having to declare this here, we're going to declare one a variable for each of the behaviors that are going to be used. So in this case, it's going to be private read only. So we know the warrior will do is, is, uh, fast blade. So we want to do sportsman. Okay, sportsman equals new. Okay, and then perhaps I have to do control dot here to use RPG game that behaviors. And of course, I have to declare the actual variable name here. So it's a wordsman, right? Just like that. And, and like I said, what we can do now is instead of having to uh, implement the fast method here, what we're going to do is just say, okay, so swordsman dot 
fast plate. So we are delegating the behavior into the other class that has the actual code, the actual implementation for, in this case, for the fast blade method, right? So I don't have to code that here. And I also have the ability to take that behavior into any other class. We're going to see that in a moment. But for now, we know that uh, our warrior should also has, uh, as it had before, both the walk and the attack uh, uh, behaviors, right? So I'm going to just copy these this two from the, from the job class and over here. And what I'm going to do is just to bring in a couple of more uh, behaviors, right? So private read only, it's going to be walker, walker equals new, and then private read only, attacker equals new, all right? So just like that, uh, now we are able to also delegate both the walking ability, which we do have to declare in this class now because there's no job anymore. Uh, but we're not going to be doing much here. All we're going to be doing is just say walker dot walk. And then for the attack one, we can say attacker dot attack. And even better, we can improve this by just doing this. So I'll do control dot here and we'll use expression body for method like that. And then I'll do the same thing, expression body for method, for walk, and for attack, expression body for method, right? And now we have a class where all of its actual behaviors are being delegated to other classes because we are composing the warrior class which, with each of the behaviors that it actually needs. And we are able to reuse any of the behaviors, not just for warrior, but for anything else. And in fact, let's go ahead and see what we can do about the other the other jobs, right? So we are going to go into Archer now. So the thing about Archer is that it has this other ability is called rapid fire, right? So we need to come up with a behavior for this one here. And so let me go ahead and just copy this and let's go ahead and create a brand new class. Let's call this class Marksman. All right. And so after fixing this very quickly, what we're going to do is just copy what we just, uh, pasting what we just copied, right? And so rapid fire now lives in Marksman. And so now we can go back into Archer, right? And we can do something similar that we did for, for Warrior, right? So it's not going to inherit anymore. And then we're going to bring in both the Walker and the Attacker behaviors, right? Over here, we're going to bring in also uh, the methods for walk and attack down there. All right, and let's also use the right namespace, just like that. And then for rapid fire, we're going to bring in our brand new private read only, and this is going to be marksman, marksman equals new. Right, and so rapid fire now can be delegated into marksman rapid fire. Right, so same idea, Archer is now delegating uh, all of the behaviors to other classes. Let's also do expression body for method here to keep things very simple. All right, so two out of four are done. Let's see what else. Now we have the white mage here, right? Which was actually the, the first problem that we hit, right? Remember that we wanted to make it so that he can walk, but he should not be able to attack. So let's see how this can help us now. Uh, now, what we do need one more behavior for, for this uh, cure ability over here, right? So let me just copy this and let's go ahead and create a brand new class. It's going to be healer, right? Here's our healer uh, behavior. I'll do this and I'll do that. And then let's go ahead and paste that, right? So now we have our healer behavior over there. And now if you go back into white mage, we can go ahead and grab that previous walker uh, instance. I'm going to just grab from warrior, right? So I'm going to grab that walker instance over there. Oh, sorry, not here. We should do this in white mage, of course, over there, white mage. And let's make sure we use that. And then we'll define our walk method, just like we have done before. Walk method, which is just going to say, of course, walker.walk, right? Just like that. And then we can introduce our private read-only healer equals new, just like that. All right. And yeah, of course, let's remember, we don't need to inherit job anymore. And let's go ahead and define public void heal, right? Which is just going to point into healer dot yeah cure. Actually, you shouldn't name it cure. Let's fix that. All right, the cure ability. Right, so once again, now the thing is that, notice that how a white mage is now able to be a walker 
and a healer, but it does not need to be an attacker, right? So this has fixing this has just fixed the original issue that we have we had with the white mage, right? So um, that's that's pretty awesome. And furthermore, let's see what we can do about the paladin now, which was the other problem that we had before, right? So paladin was in the inferno job, so let's not inherit this anymore, right? And let's bring in the behaviors that we're going to need. So if we go, let's start with the warrior behaviors. I'm going to bring in these three behaviors over here, which apply to the paladin. So I'll put these guys over there and let's bring in the correct nice space right there. Then we also need from the white mage, we're going to be needing uh, the healer, right? So I'll add the healer over here right there. And then we can go ahead and avoid this code duplication by just saying that the fast blade is going to do swordsman that fast blade, right? Yeah, actually let's remove this comment here. There's no more code duplication. And now that should help us doing that. And then for the cure, again, we can do healer.cure just like that. And let's fix this. Let's do like that. Right, and now we just have to bring in uh, the things for the uh, walker and the attacker, which we can get from any other class. Let's let's do it from warrior, for instance. I'll just grab these two into the paladin over here. Right, uh, there you go. We have our other methods right there for paladin. So the paladin is now a class that is able to use not just the two basic uh, or base methods that we had in the job class, which were walker and attacker, but now it can also use the behaviors that are being used by other uh, by other jobs, like the swarman behaviors and the healer behaviors. Right? It can use everything, and we're not doing any sort of code duplication anywhere. Right? So that is the power of composition. And if we go back into our program CS over here, we're going to see that, of course, now uh, things are looking just the same way for Gimli, our warrior, for Legolas, our archer. But for Gandalf, uh, this is this is interesting, right? So Gandalf cannot longer attack. And this is great because that did never made sense, right? So we can now safely go ahead and just remove that line, which is beautiful. And furthermore, we need our paladin, right? So let's see what we can do about that. So let's declare our Aragon character here, which is going to be our new paladin, right? And then let's go ahead and do this. Uh, Aragorn joins the battle. And of course, Aragorn can uh, go ahead and walk. Aragorn can go ahead and attack. But Aragorn can also do fast blade, and Aragorn can interestingly also do cure. So he can do all of those abilities because uh, they are composed into the Paladin job, right? And uh, yeah, if you just go ahead and run this now, so let's do the net run, and we're going to see that uh, all of our characters are doing all of the jobs, right? So we have Gimli here, walking, attacking, and using fast blade, and then we have Legolas here, doing walking, attacking, and rapid fire. We have Gandalf, doing just walking and cure, as, as expected. And finally, we have Aragorn doing walking, attacking, fast blade, and cure, right? So all of the abilities. So yeah, so that's that's really the, the power of composition. And one thing that to notice here is that now that we have this power, we can actually modify these behaviors uh, and apply that modification to any other job that is using it without having to change the jobs, right? So for instance, if we go back into our Marksman uh, behavior over here. Now remember, this is the one. Uh, actually, let's go into Swordsman, right? This is the one that provides the fast blade uh, ability, right? So what we can do now is you say, okay, you know what? Um, we are doing some sort of uh, load balancing of the of our job system, and it turns to be that this fast blade ability is just way too powerful, right? So we have to do something about it. Okay, so let's let, let's actually make it so that fast blade can only do from 85 and all the way into let's say. 115 uh, hit points, no more than that, right? And now, just by doing that, both the warrior and the paladin will acquire that new behavior, right? So if we go back into program and we just rerun the, of course, the, the program here, we're going to see that uh, both Gimli uh, is using fast plate in this case for 100 hit points, and we also have Aragorn using fast plate in this case for 105 hit points, and both of them have inherited that shared behavior, and we did not have to change any of the jobs uh, for uh, enabling this power, right? So yeah, so that's the power of composition, and of course, I mean, you could improve, further improve this here, for instance, by doing things like, for instance, we are uh, of course creating 
uh, the instance of each of the behaviors directly here, like a construction time. Uh, we could improve this by introducing an actual constructor and perhaps doing dependency injection for each of the behaviors in the class. Uh, but yeah, that's, those are more improvements. And I guess that's going to be uh, for another day. So please, please, please prefer composition over inheritance because using inheritance is only going to make your life harder down the road. And if you found this useful, please check other videos in my channel where I cover many other topics essential for professional.NET developers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.